All right, let's talk about my experiments, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. Right. I'm excited about this because I also don't know the details. I know that you saw the text messages. I saw some of the text yeah. messages, and I was very curious. Okay, so this is a big one. Um, I you're pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> what was the one where Arnold Schwarzenegger got pregnant? What was that? <laughs> I, can't I can't remember the name, yeah. but yes, I know the movie. Uh, basically, that's I have the same physique too. Um, so basically, you know, for for people that 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 know me or, or don't quite know me, like you know, I've, I've I've done a bunch of stuff in terms of being like an entrepreneur and an investor and these different things. And one of the the hats that I put on, you know, a couple of years ago was dabbling in the world of Web three. And Web3, for those untrained, it, it, you know, it's cryptocurrency. It's, it is decentralized internet. It is NFTs. It's so, art on the blockchain. It's ownership, right? It's, if if 1.0 is read-only internet, yeah. 2.0 is read-write, 3 is actually owning a piece of right. what's on the playing So field. it's a very exciting frontier. And, it, and it's filled with a bunch of explorers that I would say are, it's a small number of people. In terms of people that are excited about digital art, call it you know, 250,000 people or less, but it is, you know, a serious group of people that are enabling a new canvas to take form in front of us. And I believe in my heart of hearts that for all of the bad press that we see about NFTs and all the scams, and don't get me wrong, there's tons of that shit. <laughs> there is something true about uh, if you had to close your eyes and wake up in 20 years, will collectible digital art be a thing? Of course it will, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and the blockchain is a perfect, a perfect place to like, prove provenance, to prove scarcity. There's a lot of advantages there. Long story short, you know, I launched something called Moonbirds, which was a PFP project. I remember the text um, I got on the day of that launch. Oh my God. Yeah. So we launched this, you know, collectible NFT and it skyrocketed way beyond what we had ever thought. Yeah. So yeah. to give you all a sense from launch to one year in, over a billion dollars has been <laughs> traded in Moonbirds NFTs. That's so wild. Um, and I did not expect that. You know, I really didn't. But with that comes trading. And I have never lived the world of trading. I've grown companies to quite some size, but never publicly, I've never taken a, a company public. Mm -hmm. And when you take a company public, i.e. NASDAQ, you know, New York Stock Exchange, you deal with the ups and downs and feedback from people that are now stakeholders of that particular company. It's different. This is an equity. Holding an NFT does not make you a shareholder. It's very different. But they still pay attention to what is the price of this NFT. Yep. So when the NFT goes up, times are good. People are happy. And when it goes down, people are not happy. I've had people truly hug me and say they've paid off their house because they sold one of my NFTs for $200,000 and they were stoked. Mm -hmm. And it was like tears kind of hugging. Mm -hmm. I've had people basically tear me apart saying I am the other person on the other side of that equation mm -hmm. that bought that NFT for, let's call it whatever, 50,000, not 75,000, 10,000, doesn't really matter. It's all relative to how much that person has as a, an individual. And how are you gonna fix this because the NFTs are down and they need to go up, right? <laughs> right. And some of it is on, you know, what we, we build to try and build bigger and better things for the ecosystem and try and hopefully prove that we are a company here for the long term. It has taken a serious emotional toll on me as an individual. Mm -hmm. I have had many, many sleepless nights. I've had anxiety like I've never had before. I've had to work with therapists and I've had to, oh, I've had to reach out to my primary care physician and get anti-anxiety medicine, which I've never had to do before. I have had some dark moments with mm -hmm. some, some not dark, like in suicide, but dark as in, you know, it's destroyed me because I've always considered myself an honest person. I've never been here to yeah. screw anyone over. You're also a very, uh, I consider you to be an empathic feeler. Maybe the right word is like you're a deep feeler. I am right? a feeler. For so sure. for sure. I if something things, like if something like that is sitting with you, oh, it you take it very personally. And, and I, I remember when on, you had like stomach issues yes. for so long. Oh my God. IBS related issues. Yeah. And th that so this year I've been, you know, treated multiple times for, you know, these types of issues with physicians, 
all kinds of things. They discovered, uh, you know, the high blood pressure thing was discovered because I have a, a brain aneurysm right now. That it's on the smaller side, and they're watching it, and I'm fine. But those grow the more stress you're under because the more blood pressure that builds mm. up, the larger the aneurysm can grow. And so, you know, as you can imagine, all these things hit you at once. Yeah. And so I, I felt overwhelmed. I felt like I couldn't go to work. I felt like I, I kind of just needed to reset, mm -hmm. you know? And Huberman, who I love, who's been on my podcast, Andrew Huberman, is a top 10 podcast now. Oh my God. It's killing a, it. Killing it. Love so that He's guy. doing such a, an amazing job of executing. I don't think I've seen anyone better at doing monologues and, and the way that he can do them about yeah. scientific topics. Mm -hmm. I mean, just if you haven't subscribed to Humans podcast, I mean, it's along with the Tia's, you know, a top five medical podcast to subscribe to mm -hmm. along with Rhonda Patrick. I mean, they're, they're all heroes. Huberman did a, a couple hour episode on ketamine therapy mm -hmm. and ketamine therapy you know, it's used for PTSD, it's used for severe depression, and it's used for anxiety. And it sounded really interesting. It mm -hmm. rewires neuropathways, and Huberman's episode, highly recommend, I'm not a scientist, but he is, and he goes in depth about what it actually is doing on the brain. And I always thought of ketamine clinics as being these shady places, these places where, you know, there are real people with real addictions that they treat, you know, if you're hooked on everything from amphetamines to, you know, any type of serious addiction problems, they see these types of people and also people that are about to kill themselves, like really suicidal. Like if you go to an emergency room right now and you say, I'm going to end my life in the next 10 minutes, they will most likely treat you with some type of ketamine to just like get you out of that state. It's a very common emergency room, Hail Mary to like get mm -hmm. you back into a state of like just being okay, I don't want to end my life right now. And now we can work this out or, or take you to an institution where you can get help. Mm -hmm. So I was never there, but I got to the point where I was like, I need to do something dramatic and different. Mm -hmm. And I need to reboot because I can't take the comments I'm getting on Twitter. Now, did you see the Huberman episode organically? Did organically. someone send it to you? Organically, yeah. you just came I across did, it. It just came across it. And I was like, oh, I've always been interested in ketamine. I'd heard about ketamine in, in a recreational setting. And, you know, sadly, who was the friend? Matthew star? Perry. Yeah, Matthew Perry, just toxicology report came back and said that he was on ketamine when he drowned. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but there's, we can get into why that, that is in a minute. But in a- you know, Let's focus on your personal experience. Yeah. And I'll just say also, ketamine and jacuzzis or pools or water oh do not God. mix. Exactly. There are multiple fatalities. Don't mix those two things. Well, the, when you go under ketamine, you are literally sedating yourself to where they can give you surgery. So it's that, dissociative anesthetic. Yeah. So what, what yeah. my doctor has told me, the, the ketamine ther uh, doctor, she's an emergency room doctor that, that did my treatments, is she said to me that if you came, she was a 10 year, I think 10 or 15 years emergency room doctor. Mm -hmm. And she goes, if you came in and you had like dislocated your hip, she goes, I would inject, I would give you what they call a bolus dose. Is that what they call when they... A bolus is right. I mean, they're giving you a lot at once. Basically. A lot at once. They just like mm -hmm. push it all in, right? Yeah. And she's like, I would give you that to about like, you know, I can't remember the exact X, but it was a multiple on what they give you for therapy to put you under so I can get that hip back into place. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up feeling fine. Unfortunately, with, with Matthew Perry, he took a dose that was equivalent of subconscious, fainting, falling asleep, you know, drowning yeah. type dose. And they said the toxicology report, I read it, he had that level in him that would have put him in that state of, of, of kind of like passing out, right? Yeah, drugs and water don't mix, folks. Don't mix. Just anyway, don't, so it don't wasn't mix the, my two. point, it wasn't the fault of the ketamine. It was, he was using it recreationally versus under the supervision of a professional, which is which is what is needed. So I found this, this clinic in, in LA, they literally have the set and setting right. So they're all about, like you come in, it's just beautiful, comfortable, peaceful music, really relaxing, reclining chairs, eye mask, because it's important to go inward. It's not about just getting this therapy and looking around the room. Music with like drums and beautiful, like sometimes I, I, I pick my own playlist. I did a little bit more like chanting, non, non, you don't want like lyrics or you know, anything to distract you. And they have you hooked up to a, a blood pressure cuff that me measures throughout the time, mm -hmm. uh, a heart rate monitor, like really 
professional setting. It's called Golden Afternoon is the name of the clinic in LA. It's an amazing name. It's an amazing name. <laughs> and the doctor there, top tier, you know, school, emergency room doctor, is legit as they come. Mm -hmm. I, so I felt really comfortable because, you know, a lot of this is about set and setting and comfort. Yeah. And, and I, safety. And safety. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I went in there and they, I was like, I'm going to give this a shot because, you know, Huberman convinced me that, that this can help me with anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I laid down in this comfortable chair, turned on the heating, like they have a heating element in the chair, tilts you back a little bit, you know, put on my noise canceling headphones. They gave me an IV and IVs does sound hardcore, but for, for people like you and me that do IVs like, or do like blood draws like every other week, yeah. uh, who cares? Like, yeah. I don't care about this shit, yeah. but it does sound hardcore to most people. Mm -hmm. They gave me an IV and, you know, I closed my eyes and I went to a place, man. I went to a place and it's a beautiful place. And it made me over multiple treatments and I did eight in total. And they normally do six for depression, which is really interesting because she said that it's typically anxiety is harder to, de to treat than depression in her experience. Mm -hmm. And they gave me eight in total and you do two, two per week. And about halfway through, the best way I can describe it is imagine that life is a series of crunches. And I say crunches like the ab workout. Okay. Whereas like nobody <laughs> likes to work out their abs, right? Like, and, 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 cause abs are like, oh, fucking ab day. Like, yeah. you know, nobody wants to do that. And I didn't realize it, but I had had a 35 pound weight on my chest the entire time I was doing ab workouts. Mm. And it took that weight off and I had, and I still have, and it's been weeks later, a bit of grace and lightness to the way I'm carrying myself throughout life that is just a peace that I haven't felt since I was probably 10 or 12 years old. Were you interacting with anyone in those sessions or was no. it all internal? No, it's all internal. So it's headphones on, music, eye mask. The entire session lasts for about an hour and a half. They have a camera that's watching you. If anything comes up, one time I had my music accidentally stop and I raise my hand. They're in there within 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. They bring you hot tea when you're done. They let you take your time to slowly kind of like come to, and then you can literally walk out of there and carry on with your day. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, the first session I was like, okay, that's beautiful. Second session was a little difficult. Imagine it's kind of loosening up like the plaque in your brain and like rewiring circuits. And like, it's not always going to be easy. But by the, by, I remember the sixth session, I just walked out there and, I, and she, Dr. Jen came in and she goes, how are you? And I said, I could run a marathon right now. I feel amazing. I feel like a, a weight has been lifted off my chest. And I just, it, this is such important work that you do. Hmm. Such important work because it's not about being, I don't feel, th there's not an addiction to the substance. I don't need to go back. Some people go yeah. back for boosters, mm -hmm. depending on what they have. They have, so she told me that some people that have depression, they'll come back in, you know, every three months, every six months. She says some people she never sees again. Mm -hmm. And it kind of takes the anxiety and, and puts it, pulls it apart from your body so that you can see it for what it is, which is silliness because life is play. Mm -hmm. and, and when you realize life is play and we're all here just trying to figure out our shit. Yeah. Why are we taking it so seriously? Yeah, there's a lot it, that just does not matter. It doesn't matter. So, we can just chill, man. It doesn't really matter. So that, that we have clean drinking water. Uh, yeah. Like, what the fuck are we complaining about? <laughs> so the the weight on the chest was that something that you can't put words to that you just felt release or and you don't need to get into details. Yeah, but I'm just curious. Um, or was there a content to it where you're like, oh, no, interesting. Wasn't content. Content mm. was beautiful. I, and, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, Tim, with, I, I've never done ayahuasca, although at some point I, I would love to try it. But like, I opened my eyes and it was when the mask is on and I was seeing things that were as high of fidelity as what we see today, like sure. right now, yep. where you're like, I am in a room right now. And I felt very present. My dad's passed away. I felt very present with a father source there at times. I felt very connected. I, at one point I saw the entire world and I saw how small I was. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, it, it get, immediately gave me this sense of just like gratitude for that being that little speck, but also at the same time, 
not having to take and carry the burdens of the world on me for being that little speck. Mm -hmm. And so there's bits and pieces of that, but I would say at the end of the day, when you come out of it, it's not like you had this epiphany. It's more like Dr. Jen calls it the ketamine's time on, she calls it time on brain. How can we make this sit and do the rewiring on your brain and give you time on brain with the drug and the compound and let it do its work? And so it was a lot of surrendering. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of saying, you do what you want to do. I don't care where you take me emotionally, mentally, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's time on brain with the compound. And after a certain number of sessions, you just feel this natural lift Mm -hmm. and lightness. And it it felt like, I'm not a ballerina, uh, big surprise. (laughs) But it felt like uh, it felt like a little bit of a like walking through life is a little bit of a dance now than it is such a struggle. Hmm. It makes me super happy, man, to hear that. It and feels that, amazing. And I remember getting the the texts, some of the texts from you, and I was excited to have this conversation, which we haven't had. This is the first yeah, time we're talking about it. It is. 